Hey guys, welcome to the studio. Come on in. I've got another hot debated topic here. And of course, if it wasn't a hot debated topic, I would probably skip over it. But what I want to talk about is analog versus digital recording. And I'm applying that specifically to the home studio. Let me make that clear. This is for the home setup, home project studio, and especially for people that are just starting out. Now, a lot of people think that analog is where it's at. It's where the audio really has got the warmth. It's the most accurate representation of capturing audio, especially versus digital. And I won't debate those points. I will say that on the very high-end analog studios, and I'm talking about the profession, professional million-dollar type studios that will have the Studer, Ampex, MCI, wide format such as two inch wide tape machines that those machines can sound superior and they actually in some cases can sound a little bit better than the digital now i know i've worked with both i've worked with digital i'm recording in digital right now and i've also worked with the two inch machines in professional studios now i do believe that in the very high end that in those type of situations the analog is slightly superior but i believe that digital has gotten so good now i'm just offering my two cents here but i believe that digital has gotten so good that you're really not going to notice the differences and i think that the headaches involved with running a professional or even just a running a home studio in the analog realm is has has a lot more headaches involved to it versus just recording out of your computer and having your setup simplified in that manner. Now let me clarify here. There's a lot of consumer or prosumer type tape machines that are still lingering around. You see them on eBay. In fact, I just sold one. Uh, the TAC Tascam series, the 8 tracks, the 16 tracks, and generally those are on a, a narrower format uh, width tape. And where those machines are great, they're really aren't in the same league as a great Studer 2-inch, 24, 16-track machine. Now, those machines that I'm talking about that, the, that are geared for the home base, I think a lot of those, they're not being made anymore, but a lot of those are starting to age. And so I think for somebody just starting out and wanting to think that, yes, I need to get an analog set up, and they buy one of these, one of these machines, I think that's fine if you can find a, a machine that's in good working repair. That's certainly a, an acceptable route to go. And quite frankly, there's really nothing cooler than the reels going around and around on a tape machine when you're recording. You definitely know you're in a recording studio. But I think you can do so much more with the digital nowadays. You generally have unlimited track counts. You can have all your software plugins that will emulate your hardware. Uh, rack pieces that in my opinion are basically in the same ballpark now when you get to the very top five percent or one percent and you're dealing the pros of the pros and they're really looking for that little extra something and you hear that they record their drums through analog and then bounce them into the pro tools and then into the computer I think that definitely has some merit to it but I think for us the home recording people I think you should just totally skip that step and just go straight right into the computer right in the box you'll 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 be glad that you did that the the hassles involved with maintaining a professional machine are, are, are numerous typically when I worked in a studio you would calibrate and align the machine before all your sessions and that is generally beyond the scope of the knowledge of somebody that's just starting out wanting to record now I do want to mention that also that if you think that there's a huge sound difference then I think what you need to do is really compare some of your, your favorite recordings and then really realize are those recorded digitally or are those recorded analog and I think that the gap will narrow quite a bit between the two that you'll find that just moving the mic two inches is going to give you much more drastic results than what sort of medium that you're recording on nowadays. Now again I want to clarify there's the difference between the high-end professional type 
analog machines like I mentioned earlier the Ampex the the Studer the MCI machines generally the the 1624 tracks for the size of a washing machine very well built machines and then of course there was the plethora of the TAC Tascam other brands such as the lower end Atari machines uh, and, and items of that and I think also people that are unknowledgeable about analog think well I can just take my mix out of the computer and bounce it to a cassette which is analog and then bounce it back into the computer and I'm gonna gain the analog warmth or that fatness or saturation or whatever you're looking for that you feel you're missing and that will be your problem solved but I really think you're opening up a can of worms again this is my two cents here but I think I've worked with I've, I've worked with both mediums. I know what bouncing to cassettes are like. You get a lot of hiss. You lose your dynamic range. Your 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 quality really suffers, and you lose much more than you might even conceivably gain by bouncing or or using a low end consumer type machine. Again. These are my opinions. Uh, I'm not refuting the benefits of a very high-end analog. And I think uh, once you've been recording for a bit and, and you feel comfortable and you want to experiment, and, and these machines, the high-end stuff, can be really bought for pennies on the dollar. If you really have the space and, and desire that you want to experiment a little bit and, and can pick up a, a nice 16-track machine or a large format mixing console, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, realize what you're getting involved with uh, and the maintenance that's going to be required to keep those running and are you really benefiting in the end result that's it guys <laughs> analog versus digital I'm sure the debate will continue on and on and on again but anyway we'll see you next video thanks for stopping by guys we'll check you out later